Hi friends and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Brooke and this is Seeds the Sanctuary. And in today's episode, it's going to be a little different than it has been for the last couple of weeks where I've been going through every week and sharing what I've done with Ubering only because my family has got hit with every sickness that I could imagine. Well, not every. That's an exaggeration. <laughs> So we had strep throat and now we're going through the stomach flu. So not a lot of Ubering happened last week. I only Ubered one day and you know, we just got to roll with the punches around here. I'm a mama first and that's where I need to dedicate my time. So I figured because in the last video I showed you how I planted my seeds my tomato seeds and our my onions and our peppers. <laughs> well, I forgot to explain to you which tomatoes that I put up there. So we're gonna go through my Baker Creek Hall and my other seeds that I'm gonna be planting this year and we're gonna discuss why they're good for my zone and why I enjoy them and how they did for me last year and which ones are new to me and which ones I'm excited for this year. So if you are, excited about gardening and you want to see some new greenery thank you for joining and staying along for this video if you're just interested in gardening yourself welcome welcome aboard because gardening is one of the best things that you can do it gives you the exercise it gives you the joy it gives you satisfaction and every year is a new challenge and um i just i I just love it and I love sharing how much I love it so without further ado let's get to the rest of this video but I did want to show you my setup real quick I am going to turn this light on so watch out it's gonna get a little bright I have right here a I think this is a six by four by six foot grow tent and I'm just using a little base right here. This is a Max Sun grow light. It's a very professional light. You don't need them of this quality. Um, but yes, so I'm using this one. And I have a little fan in the corner over here. And then, yeah, that's about it. And then soil is all you need. The right materials I use Coco Core, which is one of my favorites. Fox Farm has really good nutrients um, in all of their soil mixes, and the value is worth it to me. It costs a little bit extra. I also buy my dirt on sale. So I got this big, huge, let's see if I can pull it over in my little shooting area right here. But do you see this ginormous <laughs> bag of potting soil? Well, I bought this big, wonderful bag of soil on sale last gardening season at the end of it at Sam's Club on sale for $5.50. So I bought uno, dos, tres, cuatro of them because whoever said dirt is cheap, they ain't telling the truth because <laughs> dirt is very expensive. The dirt that you want a homestead on, you got to pay for that. And you got to pay for the soil and everything else until you can build your up your own. And so that's something I am super sad about. I've spent five years building up the soil at this rental home and you know, it's to the, it's, you know, it's great soil right now, but the homestead is going to be so much better, so much better. I have great big plans, guys. Like I'm a storybook kind of gal. I love like the fantasy, the secret garden look. I want it to look romantic and delicious at the same time. Does anybody else feel me? <laughs> okay. Let's put that over there and let's, I want to plug this in so I can show you how bright this light is. You're not going to believe it. It's, it's crazy. I do have a timer that I put it on. Whoa, I told you, right? <laughs> 
the sun will come out tomorrow <laughs> so we also got one of these that we plug our light into and then it's a timer and we set it on for 18 hours on six hours off 14 or eight however you choose to do it um yeah, it's a natural light cycle. So you're going to want to, you know, um, put the timer on to what your season would be, how long your day would be, how short your night would be. And then some people like to do 12 on, 12 off, 18 on, 6 off. It really is how you, how you feel comfortable in gardening. There is really no mistakes. There's no mistakes in gardening. There's only lessons and you can only learn from it. No one starts off as a master gardener. No one, no one does. Some of us are more prone to green thumbs than others, but I don't even really believe in that. I believe it's the passion. I believe it can be circumstance. I believe it's the love that you have for gardening and growing things, not necessarily green thumbs. I do believe that every single one of us creatures on this earth have a purpose and we have different talents and some of ours is to be able to grow things even when we don't try. And thankfully, so far, that has been happening for me. But that that could not happen next year. I mean, every, every gardener, at least the ones that I've heard talk about it or experience it, you know, they, they always have that gardener fear. Did I forget how to, you know, plant my things right? Or are they going to grow? Or the seedlings going to pop up? Like those peppers. <laughs> The peppers that I planted with you two weeks ago, my gardener's doubt is checking on them every day. Oh no, did I not start my seedlings right? Did I bury them too far? You know, was the soil warm enough? You know, did I sing them lullabies at night? Did they like the lullabies? <laughs> Whatever it is. But anyway, I'm going to turn this off because it is awfully bright and it's distorting the color. But I want to get into all of these these beautiful tomatoes that I'm growing and tell you why and why I love them and why I'm excited about them. So here, let's go. Let's quit gabbing. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> so the first one that we're going to start off with is this Hungarian heart tomato by Baker's Creek. It says the Hungarian heart tomato originated in Budapest, Hungary around the 1900s. It has a beautiful, brilliant, reddish pink ox hearts that are very large, exceeding in one pound. This is why I chose to buy this one right here because I want those really big production tomatoes in my garden this year, um, along with the other ones that are beautiful to look at and just as yummy to taste. But I want big production so I can do more in my canning process. You know, I, I want to have put up a lot more canned goods than I did this year. And every year is a new challenge to make more than I did the year before. And I believe that in the next couple of months, God willing, everything is going the way it should. We should be on our own anchorage and we can finally, you know, I can have my forever garden. And so I'm super, super excited about that, guys. I'm so excited to take you along this journey, too. I have so many ideas. I've been dreaming about this for years. Here we go. Start gabbing again. Next one is not a Baker's Creek, but it is, you can get this one at your home, home Depot or Lowe's, and it is a beautiful Jubilee tomato. It's an award winner. It's a non, mild, non-acid flavor. It has uh, large globes. It can get anywhere between a half a pound to a pound. And they just say it's really delicious. And I, I didn't grow any variant colors last year except for your red. And then I did grow a purple Cherokee. I love Cherokee tomatoes. So that's definitely in this lineup. Like I said, I <laughs> like... Um, Cherokee tomatoes. So here is a black crim. And if you can remember, I kept calling it a black Chris <laughs> in that video. It is black crim. 
and it is also another big producer it produces 12 ounce tomatoes and they're this beautiful reddish purple color and yeah it says it has a unique salty flavor and you can get a salty flavor without actually adding salt to it why not <laughs> and it looks so beautiful next brandy wine this will be my first year growing brandy wine i know you've heard them all over the gardening scene and i'm about to share with them with you again but i picked this because they're supposed to be really really tasty and they're indeterminate and they can get up to a pound like i told you production is what i want this year so not only are they going to be beautiful and tasty and scrumptious but they're going to have lots of beautiful fruit on this plant and it will allow me to can more and try new recipes. Next up, this was truly because I love cherry tomatoes. I get so much joy going out there and plucking them off and eating them as I'm doing my, all of my gardening chores. These are called spoon tomatoes. Smooth. Yes. Tomato spoon. They're spoons. Itty bitty, itty bitty, itty bitty is what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> I'm, I'm stuttering on my words, but it's a micro mini fruit, maybe the world's tiniest tomato, according to Baker Creek. And it has a tangy tomato flavor and you can just pop them right into your mouth. They're kind of like little tomato candies and I'm pretty excited about them. Super, super, super excited. My husband would always, I would just get done filling up my belly full of cherry tomatoes and he would, <coughs> excuse me, he would get off of work and he would come into the backyard to check it out, you know, check me out, check out the backyard, see how the kids are doing after work. And he would grab cherry tomatoes on his way to me and he'd have a pile of cherry tomatoes. <laughs> I just filled my whole belly with cherry tomatoes. So... Hey, that's love though. He was thinking about me and that's one of my love languages. Do you guys have a love language? Which one is it? Just curious. Mine is thoughtfulness. So this is the boxcar willy. It's another huge tomato. It's prolific heirloom tomato and it can grow up to 12 ounces. It's an indeterminate. It's also a crack-free tomato, which is good because we get lots of water, lots of rain, and then it dries out, and then we get lots of water, and you know, you know the cycle. And the reason why tomatoes crack is because of those days where they're not getting consistent watering, you know. When they do, we, we get a big rain, it sucks it all up, and then they burst, which makes sense because they're sucking up all that water. So they crack. That's why tomatoes crack. The next tomato that we're going to be talking about is from Baker's Creek as well. And this is called Kellogg's Breakfast. They get those massive, huge, orangey, yellow tomatoes. It says the flavor is superiorly, superbly sweet and it often exceeds over one pound. Production is all about what I'm at about this year. Taste, production, 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 production. Taste is very important. But I want, I, I chose, I went through the list and I chose the ones that I would be able to get the biggest fruits from. Next is chocolate pear tomato. I have grown the yellow tomato pear tomatoes and I will be growing those again this year because they're absolutely delicious. Let me turn this light off so we're not blind anymore. Ah, we can see. I, why didn't I do that? I got into talking and didn't do it. Okay. So I'll be definitely growing the pear, the yellow pear ones again. And then the last tomato plant that I've already started would be this Start Roli release, Luis, release, 
Oh. I'm massacring it. Please forgive me. But isn't it gorgeous? It's absolutely positively gorgeous. It truly is. I cannot wait to see this growing on the vine. And this is one of the biggest ones. 24 ounce plus. Yes. <laughs> it says it's bursting with sweet, fruity, and complex flavors. It has just the right acidity. Tropical sweet with high antioxidant content. Large beefsteak fruit average 10 to 24 ounces. It's a 2020 taste winner. And then I also got these jelly bean um, tomato seeds. I haven't yet to start these, but I will let you know what I do. Be shortly, it'll probably be in my Thursday vlog. These are a pepper that I did not tell you about in the previous video. It is a brown jalapeno. It says it's wildly productive plant and they're smothered in these chocolate covered pods with a smoky flavor. And they're usually four to six inches long, ideal for stuffing and roasting. It has high yields, fabulous flavor, vigorous growth, and has earned brown jalapeno top marks in our pepper trials. So, high production. It's supposed to be a good one. The brown jalapeno. I did start some of my artichokes because I'm super excited to grow these this year. It's something new to me. I'm going to go over the peppers again real quick just in case you didn't get to see them. This is the um, yellow monster from Baker's Creek. And... It says it has mammoth size yellow bell peppers, can grow eight inches to four inches wide. It's impressive sunshine yellow fruits. And I got this because the production. It's really good for, you know, my area, zone six. And then the king of the north. And one of my viewers says that they got this because of my channel, and I, I doubt you're going to regret it. At least I hope not. I hope it works just as well for you as it does for me. But um, it's really good for us colder areas, <laughs> and it's a really good crisp bell pepper, and it ripens to red all the way up until frost. So you're going to get lots of production. It's good for us north folk. And like I told you guys the last time, these Cabanellis, go run, get them. You don't even have to get them from Baker's Creek. I have tried them from my local um, greenhouse. I have tried them from um, seed from Lowe's. They all come out delicious. I've saved seed from each one. This year, I did purchase them from Baker's Creek, and I doubt they're going to disappoint. course some regular mild jalapenos Hungarian wax because we love hot peppers in this family we like a little bit of a spice and then I'm just going to go over the rest of these Baker Creek seeds <laughs> because I didn't get a chance to do that with you the last time I'm so excited I can't believe it's almost spring. My sister's birthday is March 20th and it signals, you know, the first day of spring and it's always snowed on her birthday. God rest her little soul. You know, she's looking down on us from heaven and I know she's enjoying every bit of watching me grow into the person that I am growing into, the mother that I'm growing into, watching my, my son's grow up to be wonderful young men and yeah so happy early birthday Andrea Lynn I love you so much I miss you every single day you mean the world to me still and I can't wait to see you on heaven okay so I got more of these toothache seeds right here from Baker's Creek 
And then they sent me bok choy as a free seed. And then I thought, these are so beautiful. They're the Asher Blue. Isn't that so, so pretty? And then I got mini blue popcorn because, wow. They sent me some red lettuce. And then I got these Chinese baby corn because I love Chinese baby corn. I found out after I ordered these that my husband doesn't like Chinese baby corn. So... Maybe, maybe because they'll be fresh in our garden. They'll taste a lot better than the, you know, the ones that are in those cans. So, and then of course the dish gourd. I got to do it. <laughs> I got these beautiful green lime, um, zinnias. I love zinnias and they're really easy to grow. I'm also going to be growing peanuts and glass gem corn. So I just want to wrap this video up. I just want to thank you so much for joining me. And if no one has told you yet today that you were loved and you were valuable, guess what? Here's your sign. You are so loved and you are so valuable. And don't forget, if you live in my zone, you can start your potatoes. It's called St. Patty's Luck. So if there's not a hard frost yet, you can start your um, potatoes in St. Patrick's Day. I started mine last year and we did get a little bit of a frost, but I covered them up with plastic and they did just fine. So happy planting, guys. I can't wait to see you guys Thursday. Bye for now. Love y'all. Happy planting.